For those who are new to the channel, I share videos and tutorials here on YouTube and you can find free high resolution photo references on my Patreon site. If you like what I do and you want to support me, you can show your love over at Patreon. I did an underpainting of the forest background with a dull dark green and black as this will help cover any part of the painting I miss when I do some airbrushing later on. This will take a couple layers as I determine the brightest point to be somewhere in the top middle, while the edges will be darker. Using the airbrush, I spray some white at the brightest point of the canvas. It's much easier to use white as it is bright but also much easier to lay bright colors on top as opposed to a darker color underneath. I airbrush rough shapes of leaves in the background. I don't follow any specific shapes, just making blobs here and there as our brain will more often than not make the assumption that there are blurred trees in the background. To add more contrast, I use black to color blobs as well as vague tree shapes in the background. I take this opportunity to also smoothen out the harsh brush strokes of the underpainting. Unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, I couldn't record the in-betweens of this, but I airbrushed more white blobs so I can lay down some color. I started with a yellowish green as the brightest leaf colors and then added a medium green. I also airbrushed the medium green in the sunlight to also show the greeneries are growing wild and everywhere, but also in a controlled manner for the purpose of art. I started coloring black as the undertone for the hornbill. As the wings and tail felt a little complicated for me, I started doing the mid-tones for the head and body first by adding grey. Since the bird will be sharp and focused, I pay more attention to the details such as the direction of feathers and the way it shines. For this piece, I'll be painting a rhinoceros hornbill, continuing my project for bringing awareness to Malaysian animals. Fun fact, the rhinoceros hornbill is the state bird of the Malaysian state of Sarawak and the country's national bird and is shown on our 5 ringgit bill. The rhinoceros hornbill is a large species of forest hornbill. In captivity, it can live for up to 35 years. The diet of the rhinoceros hornbill is dominated by fruit, but it will take any insect, small reptile, rodent, and smaller birds that it can catch. When it comes to the wings, I make sure I have black and grey ready on my palette as acrylics dry pretty fast, so having the colours ready on hand helps with blending a lot. Since this piece is relatively small, about A3 size, I didn't paint it super detailed, particularly the wings, just a very simple shadow, mid-tone and highlight, and doing repeated lines for the feathers. The courtship and bonding of these birds are critical, as the female must trust the male to provide her with everything when she is incubating and raising chicks. These hornbills make their nests inside tree trunks, and the female stays inside with the eggs and then with the chicks, while the male brings them food. After the eggs are laid, the male collects mud and the pair pack that mud along with food and feces to wall up the entrance of the tree cavity. They leave a very small hole, just large enough for the male to feed the females and later the chicks, and for the female to defecate through the hole. Once the chicks are fully feathered and old enough to leave the nest, the parents chip away the dry mud to let the chicks out.
The rhinoceros hornbill faces a number of threats, including loss of its rainforest habitat, as well as hunting for its meat and its skull and feathers. Habitat destruction has led to the loss of large trees the species requires for breeding, which in turn makes it easier for poachers to find them. The species was uplisted to vulnerable from near threatened on the IUCN red list in 2018. For the bottom wing, I'll make it slightly brighter as well as you can see the overlapping of feathers as the sunlight pierces through, creating a more dramatic backlighting. As for the horn, I also made sure I have red, orange, and yellow ready on hand to blend them together. It looks like a big candy corn. And I will later add shadows and highlights to give a very cylindrical shape. As for the finishing touch, I would like to add a touch of drama by highlighting the feathers, giving it some backlight. And later, I will do a wash of orange to emulate the color of the sunset, making this whole piece as one.